guys. Welcome to Manitoba Bushcrafting and Reviews. I'm Alex and uh, we haven't been doing much camping lately. It's really really muddy out and just yeah I don't want to have to deal with cleaning all the gear and stuff so I haven't really been bothering with that. But uh, from our last video you guys probably seen that we got the tack to plane in. So this will be my winter tack and this video I'm basically just gonna go over the differences between this and this because I pretty much got these within a month of each other and they're the same age. I think this is a 2009 and this is a 2010. Uh, and yeah, just explain what I'm going to use them for and then uh, take you guys through a tour of this pack since I didn't do it in my last video, show you the internals of it and stuff. It's pretty much the same as that with a few extra little things. Um, to start off with the saddle here is a uh, standard issue for SOCOM. Uh, it's a 60 liter pack and does not have a load bearing waist belt. So right off the hop when I got this, I used it and I was like, I tried packing all my gear in it and it, yeah, I was just like, no way. Um, but uh, for smaller loads, like I have it right now, I got it set up for my wife. It is um, actually really comfortable. I think there might be maybe 30 pounds in there right now and that's pretty much as heavy as you'd want to carry it of course you could put more bulky items in that would fill the pack out more but you wouldn't really want to push the weight over 30 without a load bearing waist belt because uh all that weight is on your back and your shoulders and i might be a sissy but <laughs> it's heavy when you pack it over that uh, this one came in like new condition. It was never issued just by looking out at all the buckles and stuff because these buckles here would have scratches on them from setting it down and stuff. There wasn't a mark on the pack, so I'm just going to assume it was never used. Whereas this one, this one's seen Afghanistan apparently, never in combat, just lugging around the gear. Um, it's been well taken care of. I've looked it over and the only thing that I can really see that's wrong with it is staining on the storm collar and right there there is a few pinholes so maybe they set it down on a, a cactus or something I'm not too sure but uh, other than that it's clean the buckles do have some scratching which is expected uh, doesn't bug me one bit okay these big rip zip pouches, they go for quite a bit on eBay individually and even as a set. Uh, I put them on here just uh, to see what, what it would make the pack look like, how big and bulky it would look. And she's huge. This pack's huge. Uh, I do believe these pouches were never used and if they were, whoever used them took very good care of them. Um, I might take them off. But they are handy because I've got my cook pot in this one, my food bag at the top in this pocket, and then on the other side i got my jet foil. So right there, all I have to do is take the pack off, bam, I'm at my cooking kit. So that's nice. This pocket, i got my rain jacket, rain pants. Uh, once again, just pull the zipper and voila, I'm at my rain gear. Um, the reason I needed this pack is because with the Pintler, the pack I traded for this, I couldn't fit my bulky sleeping bag because I use two sleeping bags. I use a down one, which compresses quite small. It's really compressible. And then I got a cheap one that I bought at the local hardware store for like 90 bucks. That goes down to minus 12, but it's rather bulky and heavy. Uh, and I used to carry those in the dry sack between the frame and the pack on my pantler because it does have that load shelf from it being a uh, hunting pack. So I carried it that way, but that pulls the weight way, way, way far from your back and kind of makes you go backwards, especially if you're on uneven terrain and stuff like that. That weight so far away from you can just flip you right off your feet. So this is more... Uh, closer to your back believe it or not looking at it you wouldn't think so but it is it's at least I'd say eight inches closer to your back uh, my heaviest items stuff that I would have to put on the outside of the pintler can now sit close to the frame like my tent uh, so that that disperses the weight 
way better across your whole back and onto your hips. This does have a load bearing waist belt and I'm very happy with it. It is seriously the most comfortable waist belt I have ever used on a pack. So with this weight, without this weight, I'm sure the Pentler would have probably been more comfortable. But with this amount of weight, it's super comfy. I am going to look into the Mean Pad by Ovi Innov... Yeah, Ovi? Is it Ovi? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of you guys will know what, what I'm talking about. But yeah, Ovi Innovations, I do believe they carry the Mean Pad, which just, uh, here, I'll just show you. See, this thing's sitting even on my knee like this. <laughs> you can tell it's just heavy. The pack alone weighs nine pounds. Maybe even more with those sustaining pouches on the side. So yeah, the main pad will sit right here on the lumbar. And it's got straps that go around it right there to keep it in place. And it's got an anti-slip material on it. It's a grippy material and it just sits here. And it comes with three layers of foam in it, I do believe. And you can remove or add foam until it's comfortable for you. Uh, and I think I'm going to try that out because I'm not the largest guy in the world, so especially my waist. So this thing packed out like super heavy is going to kind of sag on me a little bit. And uh, if I put that there, it shouldn't. It should grip better. It should be a tighter fit. Um, the Pintler, even, even that, that slipped on me and that was also a medium waist belt. Just a different design. Um, so let's, let's, uh, take a look at how I got this thing packed out. Before I do that, it does have a second set of, uh, pass-through buckles here in case you want to, re uh, take off this load lifter and put it here. Say your load isn't this high. It's, uh, a lot less, uh, stuff in your pack. You can move the load lifters down, which I like. So... And unlike, okay, let's, let's talk a second for the differences between this and the Mystery Ranch 6500. Uh, the 6500 includes the nice frame, which is their uh, foundation uh, for most of their military packs. Uh, you can just swap the bags out on, on your nice frame and get a, get a lot of modularity through that. Uh, but this is an internal frame. I do believe this is the largest internal frame pack that Mr. Ranch made. I don't think they're making this pack anymore. I have seen updated versions of this pack from like 2013, I do believe, where these bolsters here are the removable kind with the buckles and stuff like that. But uh, otherwise, I don't think the pack has changed much. Uh, and yeah, this is basically a smidge smaller than the 6500, so... That is uh, not really, you ain't going to notice it. I think it's like 500 cubic inches is all that is missing. But these pockets make up for it. And I don't think these pockets come on the 6500, so I don't even know if they make these pockets anymore. Uh, otherwise, this compared to the 6500, the 6500 has side zippers to access the internals of the pack. Um, and that's pretty much the only difference. Okay. Yeah, I'm wearing my famous pajamas, <laughs> but that is okay for this. It's late at night, guys. It's always late at night when I do these things. So, let's break her open. We have the day pack lid. I did notice this buckle on this side, <clears throat> the one that you like squeeze to release the mail. Uh, it does feel a little worn out. So we got the day pack lid in here. You got your nice uh, morale patch field right there. I have this big old uh, possibles pouch. Okay, that weighs a lot. <clears throat> All on its own. If anybody knows, because I don't know, what are these for? These little clips here. I have no idea what those are for. So if you know, let me know. There is light staining right here. I'm sure a wash in the shower could fix that. We've got my medical kit on top. Okay, I want that as 
quick as I can. This I have not done a review yet on because I don't, I don't think it's really good for your knives in the long run. <clears throat> but uh, I guess I will review this. It's a Spyderco Triangle Sharp Maker. Uh, so yeah, I'll eventually do a review on that. So I'm just going to stick this back in here. Okay. With the Storm Collar, <clears throat> you got two cinches. You got the main one at the top here. I'm like, look at this thing. You pack this thing out and really stuff it. You can fit quite a bit in there. A lot more than what I got in there. Uh, second draw cord down at the bottom there. The double the draw cord. I know you can't see what I'm doing right now, but there's a, a buckle and one on this side here. And that's to cinch your load down. So there's lots of options for compressing this thing keeping stuff from shifting. This is an empty canteen. I should not have an empty canteen in my bug out bag. <coughs> the tent, you've seen that before guys. If any of you are newcomers and haven't seen any of this stuff, just scroll on through my videos and check it all out. Because pretty much everything in this pack has been reviewed. We got the Jetboil brand fuel, which, uh, I haven't really had time to test because even the last time, well, last time and the time before that I camped and it was off camera. I was just camping for fun. I never used that because I had food pre-made. So I never used the jet well. We got my giant sleeping pad. My fishing kit. Here, yeah, let's go into these guys here for a second. I do like that there is carbon fiber stays <clears throat> in these side pockets. So if the pack does not have full volume, they're not going to flop over. They'll stay rigid. They might sag a little, but the, for the majority of it, they'll stay rigid and upright, which is cool. I do like that. There's nothing worse than trying to get something out of a pouch that's like flopping over. Especially if it's tight fit in that pouch. So we got my cook set there. That one's empty. The rip zip. I wish they would have put a little piece of fabric right in the front here so you could grab onto it from both sides and peel it like that instead of just the one on the top. But they don't even make these anymore, so I'm pretty sure they don't. So jet foil, like I said earlier. Uh, and oh, a brand new pack of my favorite item in the winter time. Remember there's 20. It says 10 because two come in a pack, but there's 20 foot warmers and I only ever use one even in outrageously cold conditions. And then I got a beanie in there. So that's that. Let's go with the tubular pocket. I got my tarp. I got fuzzy hats and gloves going all the way down. That's what I got in that one. And then my rain gear in the other one. You guys have all seen that stuff. And if you haven't, I do have videos on it. <coughs> Leather mittens. Since this is a winter pack, I wanted to pack it as if it was going on a winter trip. Just to see if everything fit. So we got the leather mittens. The Teton Sports Sleeping Bag. Uh, I've stated in previous videos that I like uh, stuffing my, them in my pack out of their stuff sacks because it, uh, it just fills the pack better. So, as you can see, this thing's already pretty much empty. Then I got my Generation 3 Level 7 Park and Pants in the bottom. Now, if you guys want to take a look. Okay, so here's the inside. This is the frame side. So from what I can tell, there is carbon fiber stays right here, but then there is cut plastic all in this white spot here. And I do believe they are Teflon lined. 
Okay, then down in from there, we have the radio pouch. That would be where your radio would go. I can't figure out what I'd use it for. Then we have the internal sleeves for hydration bladders. I do believe they can hold uh, three liter bladders in either side. And then we got that center zip that leads right into the pack. Uh, there is a, a buckle right here. And then there's another one on this side. And that's to keep strain off this zipper for when it's really packed tight. Or say you got something super heavy in there like weights or whatever you're rucking with. You got, you have uh, something that just takes tension off of the zipper. <laughs> just like the 6500, the Tactoplane has the straight zippered wide mouth access. I think they call it a speed zip. So you can undo these clips. I might have to put the camera down for this. So yeah, <clears throat> it gives you wide mouth access to this uh, sleeping bag compartment, which I would use as a sleeping bag compartment if I had just one sleeping bag, but I don't. So it has its own uh, compression system built right into it here. So you can cinch it nice and tight and keep the strain off of this zipper. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here's the internal flap divider. So you can make make them into two separate compartments, the sleeping bag and the the uh, the main compartment. Then, and uh, the divider clips in right right there to this <clears throat> female buckle right here on each side. But if you don't want to do that, you can. Connect these ones at the bottom. Yeah, I clipped it on there. <laughs> then you can zip this back up and uh, fold it over. You fold it over like that. You can feed these back through this uh, line of molly at the bottom and lash on, <clears throat> say, for example, the tent. I could lash that on like that. Collapse the compartment and lash it on. And that'd be a nice way to carry something externally. It doesn't have to be a tent. You can pretty much use whatever you want. But I think that'd be cool. And that, that way, when you're setting your pack down, it's not all going to have the weight on this tent because the frame is right there. So it'll be sitting on the frame most of the weight. Not crushing your tent underneath your pack like a, if a, I were to carry it on the saddle. The only place to externally attach the tent would be on the bottom and the pack would be sitting on this tent with all its weight. So that's one of the reasons why I like this, this setup. If I want to rock one sleeping bag and, uh, sorry for the shaky camera. If I want to rock one sleeping bag and keep the tent on the outside, I can. <clears throat> so Guys, that's a look at the Mystery Ranch Tactoplane 98 liter reconnaissance pack. Uh, I don't know how many guys actually use this in the field, but uh, it's definitely going to be decent for anyone who wants to go on winter expeditions for whatever, even if you're out chasing Bigfoot, it probably <laughs> would be a decent pack. Uh, for multi-day outings. I don't know if I will carry this pack always. Like, if it's really hot out, I, I'm not going to want to lug around a 98 liter pack. So I might just use a saddle for that. But definitely this, I got this with winter in mind. Because, yeah, I was just getting sick of carrying that dry sack so far from my back. This seems to be a much better solution. It's very comfortable when you wear it too. You can tell you're carrying a lot of weight because you can feel it in your step. Every time you take a step you feel that weight but not on your back where as when I used the Pintler with this much weight it was definitely hurting my back. 
Uh, and that's because it was pulling me back and spines aren't meant to bend that way too much. So, uh, this seems to be a better pack. Also, <clears throat> when you're wearing this with a full load and you are uh, packed out with this much weight, you tend to lean just a little bit forward and I find that better, that engages your core and uh, yeah, it, it gives you a good stomach workout when you're carrying it. So, that's another benefit if you want to ruck with this thing. Uh, yeah, all that weight's not going to be on your shoulders. The hip belt is pretty decent on this thing. Okay, guys, I'm going to pack her back up off camera. But if you like my little winter setup, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching and subscribing. We're getting close to the 300 subs mark. So we'll have to think up something special for when we hit 300 subs. I don't know yet what it could be, but we got to think of something. Okay, guys, you have a good night or day, whatever it is where you are. Bye.